20, Genesis 27, uh, 18 through 24. Um, and I, I, I was up till about 2 o'clock this morning. We got up at 5.30. You do that when you're young, see? And, uh, and, uh, and I, I was asking the Lord, Lord, what, what should I preach this morning? And uh, my mind come right back to this. Um, Genesis 27, 18 through 24. So he went to his father. Now, 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 now let, let, let me give a little background here. Uh, Isaac is an old man. Isaac is blind. Isaac realizes that his time of departure is at hand. He realizes that my clock can stop ticking at any moment. And he said within himself, it's time for me to give the blessing of the firstborn on my children, on my, on my son, because I'm not, I don't know if I'll be here tomorrow or not. And so here Isaac is blind, and he, he's he's uh, he's old, and 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 he uh, uh, calls his son in to uh, be with him, and, and to to give him the blessing of the birthright, and uh, and so his wife knew that he was going to do this. And so she comes to, now J Jacob was the one that was supposed to get the blessing. But Esau was favored by his mother. Or, or, or vice versa, back up. Jacob was favored by his mother. Esau was the one to get the blessing of the birthright. And so she, knowing that, that it was time for their father to give that blessing. And knowing that he was blind, she comes up to her son, Jacob, and says, we are going to deceive your father. Now, isn't that nice? Man, you, you know, people talk about a, 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 a dysfunctional family. This was a dysfunctional family. Now, a lot of people talk about, you know, I got a dysfunctional family. I, here, here's, here's what I want to know. Show me a functional family. That's what I want to say. Because every family I know has got some weirdos in it. Every family I know has got, got somebody you hope that don't show up at the family reunion. Come on now. Every family I know has got somebody that always takes home more than they bring. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so she, uh, she gets together with, with Jacob and says, Listen, your dad is blind. And we're going to deceive your dad and make him think that you are Esau. And he, he said, I can't do that. My voice is not the voice of Esau. And beside that, Esau is a hairy man. And I'm not hairy. Amen. See, Brother Crow could be Esau. Praise God. Uh, we, we were talking, we were in the room back there this morning, and I know, so I said, man, this guy's got hair. And I tell you what, this guy right here could be Esau. Amen. Amen. But I, 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 I'm, 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 I got some hair, but not like this guy. And, uh, <laughs> And so, so he, she says, we are, we're going we're gonna to deceive your father. We're going to take some animal skins and we're going to put it on the back of your hands. And we're going to get one of Esau's uh, garments and we're going to put it on you. And you are going to go in there with your father and you are going to deceive him and make him think that you are Esau. And you are going to get the birthright blessing because this is what I want for you. And so here is this, here is this uh, 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 plot to deceive a dying man. What a sad situation. 
that your wife and your son is pl plotting to deceive you, and here you are holding on to your last, last few breaths. Yes. And so uh, e uh, Jacob comes into the room, and he has got Esau's garment on. And he's got Esau, got hair that has been put on his hands and the back of his neck because she knew that, that, that there would be a question of the voice. She couldn't do anything about the voice, but she could do something about feelings. And so she knew that, that Esau, that, that Isaac would make a decision based on his feelings ultimately. And so here it comes. Here it is. And he came. So he went into his father and said, My father? And he said, Here I am. Who are you, my son? Now, now uh, understand that Esau had just left the room. And Esau was told by his father, I want you to go out, son, and I want you to make me some of that venison like only you can fix. And when you come back, son, we're going to sit down and we're going to talk business. And I'm going to lay my hands on you and I'm going to impart the blessing of the firstborn on you. And so Esau has left the room. And he's gone out looking for a deer or whatever it was he was going to fix. And so in comes Jacob. And he says to his father, here, my father. And then immediately the blind uh, e. Isaac, he's looking around and said, who are you, my son? In other words, I, I, there's something here with the voice that don't match up. Uh, Esau supposed to be walking through that door. Who are you, my son? And Jacob said to his father, I am Esau, your firstborn. I have done as you told me. Please arise, sit and eat of my game, that your soul may bless me. But Isaac said to his son, listen to this, why is it that you have found it so quickly, my son? And he said, because the Lord your God brought it to me. And Isaac said to Jacob, please come near. Mama knew this would happen. Please come near that I may feel you, my son, whether you are really my son Esau or not. See, he knew that Jacob was a deceiver. He knew that his son had this tendency. And Jacob didn't get it off of the ground. He got it from mama. That acorn didn't fall too far from the tree. And if you remember, she had a brother. That was just like him. It's like her. And then Jacob would flee to that individual at some time down the road and he would be deceived. Better, better, better watch out what you do because, you know, it'll come back to you. Amen. You do something wrong, it'll come back to you. Amen. But he said, please come near that I may feel you, my son whether you are really my son Esau or not. And so Jacob went near to Isaac, his father, and he felt him and said, now I'm thinking he said this within himself rather than out loud, the voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. And he did not recognize him because his hands were hairy like his brother Esau's hands. And so he blessed him. And verse 24 is probably one of the saddest verses I've ever read in the Scripture. Here's this old man. He's, he's blind and he's, he's feeble. And he looks up at this image standing before him, and there's all kind of conflicting feelings going on in Isaac's heart and his mind. And he looks up and says, Are you really my son Esau? And the deceiver looked at his father and said, I am. Amen. Lamb of God, you could be sick. Lamb of God, we love you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for your word. In the precious name of Jesus, we love you. Lord God, we love you. In Jesus' name.
The plan was simple. Hell had a plan to deceive the feeble Isaac. I want you to know today that if you don't have a plan to live for God, the devil's got a plan for you not to live for God. If you haven't made up in your mind to serve the Lord yet, I'm telling you, there's a world out there that will convince you not to do so. Amen. There are, there are voices constantly speaking to us, especially in these days. Uh, the Bible says that in the last days that evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse. And, and these are voices that 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 we've got to to uh, learn how to filter and to uh, put aside and listen only to the voice of God. And so there was a plan. It was Mama, and it was Son that's going to deceive the patriarch. Amen. You know, and I, I think I shared this with you. Uh, Last time I was here, uh, seven years ago, eight years ago, I buried my wife. She died of cancer. And, uh, and I was her caregiver for ten long years. When she died, um, I'm not going to rehash all of that. Uh, when she died, I wanted to die. And there was a couple of nights that I laid in that bed through all of the struggles and all of the torment that my mind was going through. And I want you to know that there was a couple of nights that I held a 357 revolver in my hand. I laid in that bed and I had this pistol in my hand and I knew that one pull of the trigger is all it would took for my pain, at least here, to go. And I held that gun and I remember looking at it and I just, I wanted to die so bad. And see, you know, a lot of people say, well, I'd never do anything. Well, go through it and then tell me about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you go through it and then let me know how that works for you. Okay? Because if you would have told me that I would have been capable of even thinking or something like that. I would have said, no. Are you crazy? And of course, you know I didn't do it because I'm here. But the point is, I wanted to. Because I was making my decisions based on the way I felt. And it was the voice of God that kept me for pulling that trigger. Because years before that, I had hid the word of the Lord in my heart that I might not sin against Him. See, you, you need to read the word of God and you need to get into the word of God because you may not need it right now, but there's going to come a day. You may think, well, you know, I've read that before. Read it again. Because there are, there will come a day that that you will uh, be at a crossroads, and you're going to have to make up in your mind: Am I going to go by what I'm feeling, or am I going to go by what I'm hearing? And so, here is, uh, and what I know, and here is the dilemma: Every one of us live in this chapter, because see, I remember. One, one night I, I went down and had to cry until I couldn't cry anymore. I went down to the altar and I was praying and I was standing on this side of the altar and, I, and I, my eyes were all swollen. I, I was just a basket case. And I said, God, I don't know what to do. I just don't know what to do. And the Lord spoke to me these words. What is it that you do know to do? See, sometimes when you don't know what to do, the only thing you can do is what you do know. 
And so I reflected in, 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 in my mind, and my mind played back like a video. And, and I remember that, how I was when I was 15 years old, and, and I gave my heart to God. How I walked into the church, I was a misfit. My mother was the misfit of the family, and I was her son. And so all of us were put into that basket. You know, you know she was the black sheep, and I was the black sheep's a son, and so, uh, you know, she was an alcoholic. My dad was an alcoholic. And, and, you know, and the family said, he will he will never be nothing but an alcoholic. And, and that is Winnell's son. That's Pat's son. And, and, you know, and, and, and I walked into the house of God with that messed up life and that messed up persona of myself. And I remember how God breathed life into me. And how when I gave my heart to God that... I I was no longer a misfit. I, 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 you know, I, my family over here may not have loved me, but now I have found a family that loves me. Yes. Mama wasn't there when I needed her, and Dad wasn't there when I needed her, but there was a church that was there for me, and there was a pastor that loved me, and he had time for me. He became my father. The church became my mother. And I thought to God, I said, yes, Lord, there are some things that I do know. I do know, Lord, I love you with all of my heart. And my mind, it was just like, it was just like a video was playing in my heart and in my mind. And I was just rehearsing the goodness of God while I stood there at that altar, uh, uh, feeling sorry for myself and, and telling God I didn't know what to do. Amen. The Lord said, what is it that you do know to do? Amen. I, 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 ran, I reached back uh, for that anchor and I said, God, yeah, I do know. I said, Lord, if you never touch me again, if you never heal my body, Lord, I'm going to serve you all the days of my life if you choose not to take me if you choose to leave me on this earth I want you to know Lord God I'm going to serve you because that's what I know to do when you don't know what to do and you're going to get there we're all going to get there multiple times in our life and the thing you cannot do is go by your feelings. Your feelings will deceive you. Your feelings will drive you into the arms of the world. Your feelings. And I see, see uh, Isaac knew. He, he knew that was not Esau's voice. But he also knew that he was weak. And the devil was playing on Isaac's weakness. And we all have weaknesses. And I want you to know today that all of us are like Isaac. We are all blind to a certain degree. I can't see my shortcomings like you can see my shortcomings. I, 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 sometimes, I, you know, it's easier for me to find your faults than it is my own. Uh, and, and, and sometimes, you know, uh, 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 we, we, we are blind. We're, we're, we're just blind. Our motives are not right. Our heart is not right. And, and, and we, 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 uh, we are blind in these areas. And so this is where the enemy comes in to take advantage. When you're hurting. When you're being side swiped by issues and things and you, and you feel like giving up. And you feel like staying home. And you feel like going back to the bottle. Or you feel like going back to drugs. That is the day and the hour that you've got to stand flat-footed and say, I know that my Redeemer lives. Amen. I'm not going back. I'm not going to turn to the left. I'm not going to turn to the right. But I'm going to keep on living for God. Hallelujah. When you don't know what to do, hold on to what you do know. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen, amen, amen. 
Amen, amen. There's two kinds of people here today. Two kinds of people in this congregation. The man or the woman that will do the right thing if they feel it. And there's the man or the woman here that will do the right thing whether they feel it or not. You know, we're, we're, we're Pentecostals. We're apostolics. And we do a lot of emphasis on feelings. Oh, we, 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 we put a lot of emphasis on feeling things. I felt the Holy Ghost in the house today. Oh, I felt uh, the presence of God in that song today. Amen. But let, let, let me ask you a question. Whoever told you you had to feel everything? Yes. There, there, there's going to be more times in your life that you don't feel it than when you do feel it. Now I love, I, but I, I love the feeling. I, I love to be in God's presence. I love to shout. I love to dance. Amen. But you, you don't live there all the time. And so whenever the lights are turned off and there's no music and there's nobody around you, you know, who are you when the lights go off? And whenever trouble comes and, 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 and everything breaks loose in your heart and your life, what do you do when you don't know what to do? And this day that we're living in, that question is even more pertinent. Will you do what is right if you feel like it? Will you be faithful when you feel like it? Will you give when you feel like it? Or will you be faithful when you don't feel like it? When you don't feel, when you feel like heaven is brass and, and your prayers aren't even getting past that ceiling right there. Amen. Will you still remain faithful? Will you still walk with God when you don't feel it? Will you still walk with God when all of the hell is breaking loose and all of the voices around you are telling you not to go and not to be what God wants you to be? Amen. Amen. He said, my sheep know my voice. Isaac should have made his decision on the voice. Isaac should have made his decision based on what he heard rather than what he felt. But because he was beaten down and because he was weak, he was vulnerable. I, I had a I, I had a, a man tell me something a long time ago that has stuck with me through the years. He said, "Don't ever make decisions when you're not feeling good." Well, well, when you're not feeling good in your body, you don't need to make decisions about your spirit life. When you let me tell you, it's very few people can remain spiritually alert when they're sick in their body. A lot of times when we're sick in our body, it affects our spirit as well. And you don't, you don't need to be making decisions when you're going through trials and tribulation. You need to wait for a better day and a brighter moment. Don't make decisions when you're in the valley of despair. Amen. Just remain faithful. Don't, don't, don't go to the left or to the right. But let, as the writer said, my foot standeth in an even place. Get a place in your walk with God to where you can stand still and still do what you know what to do. Amen. To where you can find faith and you can find security when you don't have feelings to back up everything. And so, he said, my sheep know my voice. Don't make decisions when you're sick. Don't make decisions when you're overwhelmed. Amen. Go to prayer. Get your mind focused. Find godly counsel. Amen. Call your pastor. Call, uh, 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 lean on a, the shoulder of, uh, of a brother or sister that, that, that you can confide in. Come on. Amen. Because it is important to hear the voice and not walk by what you feel. This is why God instituted the church. This is why God has ordained that you have a pastor in your life. 
Godly counsel, fellowship, music, all of that is ordained of God. Because if we don't have that, we are just a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. And we wander through life making wrong decisions. Notice Proverbs 14 and 12. Now this scripture is, or this this this. Uh, verse is recorded twice in the Word of God, but in Proverbs 14 and 12, notice what it says here. There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. Wait a minute. It feels like Esau Come on, yeah. It feels like the right thing to do. Hey, you know what? When, when I pastored for thirty-eight years, when people would come to me and say, "Brother Harvey, I feel, I feel like I need to do this or I need to do that," first thing, I, 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 it's a red flag. It's a red flag because your feelings will sail you down a dead end road. The Bible says the heart is desperately wicked and no man can know his own heart. Amen. I'm telling you today that that is why I can't walk according to the way I feel. I've got to walk according to the Word of God. For there is a way that seems right unto a man. Esau, I know, it feels like Isaac, Isaac, it feels like Esau, but it's not. You're being deceived. Don't make a decision based on what you feel, but make a decision on what saith the Word of God. Amen. So there's a way that seems right to man, but the end thereof is the way of death. It feels right, but it ain't right. It feels like like Esau, but it's not. It's a lie. That's why the Bible says the just shall live by faith. Faith in what? Your feelings? Or the Word of God? Come on now. Now the Bible says that everything that can be shaken will be shaken. You know what that tells me? That tells me that in the days to come, your feelings are going to go crazy. And so one of the best things that any of us can do is turn the news off. Praise God. That's the most, that is the most numbing, victory stealing thing there is. Because a half what you're hearing is a lie. We're living in a day and time where you can't even get a text without wondering if it's a scam or not. You get a phone call. You don't know who it is. Oh, you want a million dollars. All you got to do is give us your social security number and tell us where you live. Hey, man, we'll send you this million dollars. Yeah, sure you will. Everything's a scam. Everything's a lie. You know, they, they, did, a, they did a survey, and I forget who they were. 71% of what the media shows us today is a fabrication. Because they're trying to sway your mind to think a certain way. To vote a certain way. To be a certain way. We, 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 we don't have, we don't have uh, uh, news anymore. We have propaganda. That's right. And I'm telling you, 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 you can sit down after a good prayer meeting speaking in tongues and turn on the news and you'll need to, need to go pray again. Amen. I remember Ann Murray wrote a song years ago. I sure could use a little good news today. Amen. I'm telling you, let me tell you where the good news is. It's in the word of Almighty God. It's not in the way I feel. It's not in the way I think. Amen. It is in the word of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. For there is a way that seems right unto man, but it's not right. Faith cometh by hearing, not by feeling. 
Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Because in Jeremiah 17 and 9, he says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? So you know what the prayer, you know what your prayer and my prayer has to be? Lord, save me from myself. Save me, God, from me. Uh, my worst enemy looks at me in the mirror. We have found the enemy and he is us. Because only, like, like Smokey the Bear said, only you can prevent forest fires. And how are you going to do that? How are you going to prevent a forest fire in your soul? You've already tried this world. You've already tried drugs. You've already tried all this mess out here. Hey Amen. Don't you know? You Haven't you made up in your mind? There is nothing out there for you. How did that work for you when you was out here? Didn't work, did it? Didn't work at all. Hey Amen. And so when I gave my heart to God, I made up in my mind, I'm not going to try to figure my life out myself. I'm not going to try to direct my own path. I, every time I try to direct my own path, I make a mess out of it. Every time I try to make a decision and it's not based in prayer and on the Word of God, I, oh, I'm making a mess everywhere I turn. But God, let me walk in the pages of your Word. Let me hear your voice. Let me hear what saith the Word of God. And I know... I'll know what to do. I'll know what to do. Amen. We're all like Isaac. We're weak and we're blind. And I want you to notice Jesus prayed a, a prayer. And you know, J Jesus did not ever pray that we would not fail. Jesus never prayed for you that you would not fail. Because he knew you would. But what he did pray is he said, I pray that their faith not fail. Because you may fall, but as long as you hold on to your faith, you'll get back up. You may, you may make a mistake, but as long as you hold on to your faith in the word of God, it, you'll make it, brother. You, you, you'll climb out of that hole somewhere. Hallelujah. We, hey, rejoice not over me, O oh my enemy. Amen. I'm going to get back up because I'm going to hear the voice of God. I'm going to listen for the voice. I'm going to read the voice. I'm going to surround myself with the voice. Praise God, somebody. Amen. Hey Amen. Because you know, here's the deal. Sometimes you feel like a nut. Sometimes you don't. Come on, how many remember that? Hey Amen. I like almond joy. I'm not too much on mounds bars. I want the one with the almond in it. Sometimes you feel like a nut. Sometimes you don't. Here's the reality. Sometimes you feel like a Christian. And sometimes you don't. Is that right? Sometimes you feel like a man of God or a woman of God. And there's other times that you don't. And the question is, what are you going to do in those times that you don't? The only thing that you have and the only thing I've got is to hold on to an anchor is to hold on to something that does not move, that does not sway. Amen. That is secure. Amen. I'm going to hold on. My emotions are taking me here and there, but I'm going to hold on to that anchor. Amen. And I'm not going to go back into the meagerly elements of this world. I'm going to make it if I don't listen to my feelings. Because your feelings are all over the place. And I, I, I've heard men get together and say, man, you know, boy, my wife, man, her feelings are up and down. She'll, she'll, she'll want, you should, it'll be hailing outside and she'll want to go to Hobby Lot. <laughs> and and uh, you, men, men, they have fun talking about, you know, women's emotions. Let me tell you something. 
some of us men just as bad as any woman ever was. Man, you, 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 you talk about a woman and her hormones. How about these men and theirs? Hallelujah. Hey, man, hey, you know the difference between a lot of times and not every time, but you know the difference between a man and a woman? Uh, when a woman gets down, she'll go pray. Yeah. But sometimes us men, when we get down, we just go pout. Yes. We go, we, 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 we turn on the television and we, 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 we get lost in our work or we, 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 we work extra hours on the job. Well, you know, we're trying to, we're trying to escape our feelings when we should be in the altar. I'd hate to see the church without sisters in it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. I'd hate to see the church without a praying, without praying women. Because it's sometimes, I'm telling you what, sometimes it's the women that keeps us men straight. They may not be as strong as you are physically, but most of the time they're a lot, sp- a lot stronger than you are spiritually. Amen. So sometimes you feel like a nut. And sometimes you don't. <laughs> sometimes you feel saved and sometimes you don't. Sometimes you feel like you got the victory and sometimes you don't. But if you don't listen to your feelings, you can still have victory when you don't feel it. You can still be right with God even though you don't feel like you're right with God. If the only time you worship God is when you feel it, How often will you worship God? Whoever told you you had to feel it in the first place? Uh, Whoever told you you had to get all worked up in the Holy Ghost to say, Woo! I had had somebody come up to me. uh, Well, uh, it's happened several times through the years. Man, I'm telling you, they said, oh, preacher. He said, Pat, Pastor, I almost, I almost turned, I almost got out of that island. I almost turned loose in that pew. Almost? Almost? You was waiting for us to sing another song. You was waiting for us to say something else you never heard before. You was waiting for somebody else to stimulate you. You, 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 you needed stimulation before you would worship God. No, you got to get past all of that. We need to worship God when we don't feel anything. We need to learn how to worship God when all hell is breaking loose in our lives. Tails breaking loose, high water is coming up, but I'm going to still worship God. Hallelujah. Say, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord, because I don't know what to do. Praise God. My God have mercy. Come on now. Woo. Saying a lie. Hey. I, 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 how many times you tell your wife you love her and, 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 and you only do it when you feel like it? Come on now. You want a happy marriage? You better say it when you don't feel like it. <laughs> hey Amen. Suppose the only time you went to work is when you felt like it. How, how about the only time you put gas in your car is when you felt like it? Come on now. Hallelujah. The feelings don't have anything to do with this. We need to be faithful. We need to walk in the house of God and obey the word of God and worship the Lord with gladness. Amen. Let the weak say, I am strong. Well, that's a lie. No, it's not a lie. Because you can still be weak and, and be strong but not feel it. Because Paul said, in my weakness, I am made strong. You know, well, when I'm weak, I I'm really am strong. But when I feel like I'm strong, then I'm really weak, you know? So the weak can say, I am strong, because what the weak is saying is, I don't feel like I'm strong. 
but I know I am because I am holding on to Jesus. I'm holding on to his word. I'm holding on to what he says instead of what I think. I'm holding on to his voice and not feelings. 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 It smells like Esau. It, it, it feels like Esau. But it's a lying spirit. The word of God. God will never tell you something that will contradict his word. If a lot of people tell me that they felt something. And then whenever we talked about it, it was a diametrically opposite to what the word of God had to say. Don't ever question in the darkness what God told you in the light. You, you're not the only person that questions themselves during trouble and trials. You're not the only person that sometimes you just cry and, and you, you, you're a basket case. And, and you, 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 you struggle. You struggle. Who am I? What am I doing? Am I doing the right thing? You know, what's going to happen next week? What's going to happen next month? What, what about this? What about this? What about that? I, none of us have these answers, but we know where the answer lies. The answer lies while you're working through all of these things. Remain faithful. Remain faithful to the house of God. Remain faithful in your worship. Remain faithful in your giving. Remain faithful, amen, with your commitment. And you're going to come out of this thing. This too shall pass. Amen. We all, here, here's the deal. We all need a pastor in our life. Not just a preacher. A lot of people's got a preacher in their life, but they don't have a pastor. Oh, what a difference. A preacher becomes your entertainment source. A preacher becomes someone for you to go listen to. But if you have a pastor in your life, <laughs> if you've got a pastor in your life, he can speak into your heart and into your life. And you will listen. Surround yourself with faithful people. For my heart, your heart, is desperately wicked and no man can know it. Amen. Amen. The voice. The voice is what we must hear. Faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And my sheep know my voice. And a stranger, they won't follow. In other words, they're not going to go according to their feelings. They're going to go according to what they hear. Eight times in the book of Revelation, the Bible says, He that hath an ear, let him hear. Amen. Let him hear. Not let him feel, but let him hear. And so here we are today in 2022, looking at perilous times in our nation, in our economy, all these things. There's trouble coming, brethren. Hear me. There's dark days coming. Knock, knock. They're already here. Things are going to get worse. And I'm not being a, a doomsday preacher here. I'm telling you the Word of God tells us these things are going to happen. Everything that can be shaken will be shaken. And how is he going to do that? Through your feelings. Because the word is not going to change. The word is always going to be what it has always been. The only variable in your life is your feelings. So when trouble comes and our nation gets darker and, 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 and all of these things we see unfolding, what are you going to do? In that time, in that day, are you going to get carnal here at the last minute? Are you going to try to figure out things for yourself now? It's too late for that. It's too late for that. We have got to hold on to what we do know 
And we do know that God is with us. And we do know that God loves us. And he has a plan. And when I don't know what to do, hold on to what you do know. And God will bring you through. Amen? Amen? You know, it never, surprised, it never ceases to amaze me how people, a couple, let's say a married couple, they're, they're going through trouble. You know, they're, they're going through trouble. And so they said, well, I don't think I'm going to go to church tonight. Why? Because we, uh, we got, we got uh, so much going on and we're trying to figure out what we're going to do. And Listen to yourself. Talk. Listen to yourself. Well, I, I know it's Wednesday night. I know, I, you know, I know it's midweek service, but you know, I got so much to do, and uh, you know, I got, I got this problem. I, I got, you know, uh, listen to yourself. You're leaning to an arm of flesh. You're leaning to your own understanding, and it's been being influenced by your feelings. You feel like you've got to get control of it. You feel like you have got to do this. You've got to have your part in it. But let me tell you something. You've got to do it God's way. And when you're going through the proverbial hell and high water, that's not a time to sit out and miss church. That's not a time not to come around the front and pray. What's wrong with you? Well, I'm going through a lot. You know, you know, your pastors can, you listen, this, here's the way it works. A pastor can look at a congregation and then most of the time tell who's going through it and who's not. But how wonderful would it be if a pastor couldn't do that? That everybody in the house just worshiped God. Everybody in the house had a smile on their face. Everybody in the house, amen, were on their feet praising God and clapping their hands. Amen. And it's not because you don't have problems, but it's in spite of your problems. It's in spite of what you're going through. You have learned to be faithful. You've learned to be faithful. Amen. Amen. Ask any, ask any couple that's been married any length of time if it's all been peaches and creams. One old boy said, man, when I married her, I could have ate her. And 20 years later, I wish I had. And, 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 and then the women say, oh, I thought I married the man of my dreams, but it turned out it was a nightmare. <laughs> you know, we, we, we talk, we, we, you know, we joke about this kind of stuff. But it is real. But what do we do? We learn to work through these things. We don't change partners like we do garments. We don't. We we, we make a commitment to to, to a spouse, and, and and we do our best, Amen, to to be thankful. You can't bail ship every time she burns the biscuits. If she cooks biscuits. In our case, it's fry bread. Amen. She don't have to make no biscuits, but she can put out some bad boy fry bread. She made some yesterday. We took it over to PJ. and We took some over to Caleb. We took some uh, folks in the RV next to us. And they were all smiles. Amen. Next week, we're going to have a festival at, at Brother Connor's church, and she's going to be, there, there's going to be several vendors there and all that stuff. She's going to be fixing Navajo tacos for everybody out there. And, 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 you know, and, you know, but, but, but here's the thing. It, it, our marriage is not always here. Sometimes it's down here. But you hold on anyway, don't you? Do you throw your children away? Come on now, Grandma. Do you throw your grandchildren away when they disappoint you? Oh, I'm, going, I'm disowning that boy. I'm disowning. No, you don't. You hold on because you love him. And you got a dream for him and a dream for her that they're going to have a better day, that they're going to give their heart to God and everything's going to be all right. It's the same way in living for God. Don't cast away your confidence. For there's great reward if we can remain faithful to God. Faithful to God. 
whether you feel it or don't feel like it. Well, praise the Lord. Are you going to church that I don't feel like? Now, I, listen, I'm not talking about being real sick. You know what I'm saying? I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about, well, uh, it's just, I, I, think, I don't think I'm going to go to church tonight. But see, here's, here's the problem. We want God's best, don't we? We want God to be faithful, don't we? But how faithful are you? It, can we expect God to be faithful to us when we are unfaithful? Can we expect God to supernaturally intervene in our lives when we are hit and miss? God can't count on us from one day to the next. Some people, the only time they ever worship God is when God behaves Himself. Give me my goodies, Jesus, and I will praise you. Bless me, Lord. I got here like a, like a genie in a lamp. I got three wishes, Jesus. And if you'll answer these three wishes, I'll praise you. But suppose he don't answer those three wishes. Will you still praise him? Come on now. This is where we live. This is where all of us live because we are so feeling oriented. Amen. Feeling oriented. But we need to not be deceived by our feelings. But listen to the voice.